name is Florence Glanfield, a member of the Métis Nation of Alberta and Vice Provost Indigenous Programming and Research at the University of Alberta. I first want to acknowledge that the University of Alberta, its buildings, labs and research stations are located on the traditional lands of Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Salto, Anishinaabe and Sarsi Nations. Lands that we now know as part of Treaty 6, 7 and 8 and homeland of the Métis. Further, we recognize the long association of Inuit peoples with this place we now call Edmonton. In this virtual gathering and for Congress 2021, we acknowledge the lands and peoples to reaffirm our collective commitment and responsibility to improving relations between nations and collectively improving our own understanding of Indigenous peoples and their cultures from coast to coast to coast. We acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. For this reason, we've invited Indigenous knowledge holders from different nations to join us to share their teachings as we prepare to gather for Congress 2021. We're honoured by their presence and as you listen to their teachings, I invite each of you to consider and remember the traditional lands in which you might be located and to take a moment to consider the responsibilities that follow from that acknowledgement and to consider how we are and can each in our own way try to move forward in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Please join us now as we listen to the words of our invited Indigenous knowledge holders. Ahaun tu tem tek tawau kaki on wagu maganak. Metto ne mia sen gisa kawa no chumuta Queen Elizabeth Park ni poya. Maga nigan egi mia gasiga ya uma wi kaske ya aptita ya menu manu che wingamu ya negamon. Welcome all my relatives. We are going to begin today by how we started in in the symbolic cleansing ceremony with the sweet grass and to display this kindness to all of you today. So we acknowledge life because song has been a big part of our native culture. And so we're going to begin with a song that basically states with the Cree words, the creator had said that life is so short that we must always love and be kind to one another for it is not always that we will walk upon this earth. And so, my ceremonial name is Fine Day, but I'm known otherwise as Dr. and Elder Francis Whiskajack. So I'd like to also introduce to you my wife, Elsie Goche, and my Netans, my daughter, Shana Dion. So we're going to sing this song to begin with and uh, so that the song is the heartbeat, the drum is the heartbeat of the nation and also it moves the spirit of our grandfathers, the spirit guides and also our people. Oh, 
So once again, Tawao Kakyo Nwagumagantik. We have a rich history. And as a member of Treaty 6, uh, Salt Lake Tribe, I, realize, I wish to welcome in a very special way all the knowledge keepers in many different races. I wish to welcome all the different tribes. I wish to welcome Congress, all the different educational institutions, people with many gifts as caregivers, but also keepers of this land as Canadians. And wakutuin kakyo aisino, the people that are related to one another in many different ways. It is now the time that we honor life and acknowledge life as Canadians. But also, as my elder had once said, that learning knowledge is a gift from the Creator, because that part of our mentality, that part of our mentality is part of our body. And when we acknowledge this life, therefore new learnings in life become ceremony. And so what are we going to be sharing during this time of Congress and the many ideas from many different gifted peoples, many educators, even the children is going to be shared in a good way. And, and so as we native people, we are deeply connected to the universe. We have always acknowledged the spirit guides and the creator. We are deeply connected to the earth about, upon which we stand right now, Mother Earth. And we are connected to the animal kingdom. We are connected to the bird kingdom, the ones that fly. We are connected to the ones that crawl upon the earth, the insect kingdom and the water beings. But also in a very special way, as we stand here today enjoying the sunlight, the sunshine, the sacred fire is part of our history. We are connected with the wind, the first gift of the Creator, as it moves us in the circle of life. And we are connected very much to the water, the water that gives us strength, stamina, energy, and endurance. And we're standing on a hillside above the Saskatchewan River. And that water is a cleanser. And so we have many teachings around that. And so we, that, that is why we have that honor beat of the four beats of the drum. And that is why when we learn about native history and how we lived and were connected to the land, this is why we today are still existing, but also to revive that culture and to know how rich that culture was. So with that, Nanaskuman, thank you for listening to me. The wawn wako magantik, ni stops this, we nanaskuman anota bin dum goyan. Welcome my relatives. I also am very grateful to be invited here to do a, a small welcome to our Treaty, Treaty 6 territory. I was born about three and a half hours northeast of here in a log cabin at Wolf Lake and uh, very proud of that. My two grandmothers were there to bring me into this world uh, along with the, the things I didn't understand at that time, the sacred wind spirit that moved my lungs to cry, the sacred water that came just before I was born and the land that I was lived on for generations of where I came into. That was so such a good, beautiful time. And you say the north, you're talking about the north here at the Congress. It was the north of the season when I was born, of that Pipun, uh, Kiwetina, the north direction. And today I wanted to uh, remind people to have an open mind, to uh, 
be open to learning all the gifts and uh, the medicine people bring, because we are all medicine people, that I have come to know. And what medicine are we bringing here to the Congress? Let it be good, let it be good medicine coming out of your uh, wind spirit, coming out of your, your mind, that sort of thing. And learn all that, learn what you can from the university. We have to walk in two worlds. We have to walk in that world where we can earn a degree and, and get a good job out there. And also at the same time, we have a double job because we have to keep our language, we have to keep our culture, whatever that may be, whatever corner of the world you're from, try and learn your ceremony, your songs, your food, your sacred ways of being. And the most of all, you can do this if you have a clean mind, I say, try and live free of family violence and addictions. Only then, you can live a good way of life. Thank you for listening. Hi, hi. And so today, once again, our welcome has to do a lot with our connection to one another as human beings. Our connection has to do with the building of new relationships. The times of my survival from residential school has brought me much change. But yet, knowing my culture, indulging in ceremony has brought me that balance in life that I enjoy so much. And so uh, today I encourage you to build on those relationships because certainly it's a time of change and uh, our balance in connection with all the elements, you can have a different worldview on climate change. You can have a different worldview on how the earth is and the uh, global warming, but so many things that we, we see from a scientific view, but there's also the native view. So thank you once again. Hi, hi. Edna Ikhivalak, Elias Moyunga, Korlok Tong Muta Yunga Nunavun me, Nunavut Orleaniani Unakulak Uyarang Mit Hana Yao Himayo Utok Katagio Ukulik one hundred Ukiu, Avat Kutugo Nukama Uingata Nani Himaya, Kikak Tame, Kikak Taktamna, Natter View, Natter Hill View of Hima Yugalo, Ingilrad, Upin Rakame, Inuit, Natter Hill Rangata Una Mikka Kulak Nani Gamuk, Nuna Nungu Valia Tidugo, Kikak Tau Pinani Tarayumud, Tamang Nelang Mat Pihimaya. Ingrang Litanik Inuk Piniarome, Inningani Tigu Hiniarome, Utak Titar Yaraya Kakto, Tikoti meaning, Huna Valung Ming, Akitu Yumik, Inu Hang Minut Atak Pakta meaning, Kulakim Mau Herlugo, Ulu Galuakpat, Panau Galuakpat, Huna the Kak, Tunit Luarlugo, Him Mau Herlugo, Inninganutam, the Tunin Yaktai, Himang Yaktai. Pirulugo, Haulugo Una Nani Himaya Kulak Uvam Nutarahi Tuniblugo Un Kulak Uyarak Una Akuta Akuta Taima Taima Nimit Ukuak Atautimi Nani Himayo Nani Yao Himayo Ingilrat Kulak Natyup or Hornic, Ugyup, Kilalukablo Nate, a Kalaulo or Hoyt, Tingmelo or Hoyt, took to low to know it, a doctor of a Kaloak or Hori Blugo, Hamnata Mania Nunamut Pukuhimayetka, Kanguyait Manilia Hogo, Mania. Ang nagawhiu blunga nito tagaw blunga, taku himang gitat ka, anan at tiaga, ama magalunit at tatkalunit, kulang nig atoktut. Alas kami utaw bakalu agamik, pamiktaw lakit blunga nito tagaw blunga, kulang nig atuyuit, atu atuyuit tun nagtun. Nunabun mi atoktaw yung nagpalya galu ang mat kulang. Time manitut 
ingilgat, kulik, ublok tamad, iglu bigang mi atok tao wakimayang, iglu mi iluane, nakiliyo tigil lo ako ko, oko oko mi tigil lo ko, unak tigil lo ko, kau makutigil lo ko lo iglu bigang mi, ang nait munat munak tiyak pagait kulitik, kami tayo lito ako git. Niglau magalu aktin lugo, igluviga ub iluane, kulla ikumain naktong. Anna u magjuta uman. Nuna bun me at ang night kulla utaktit pagan. Tamak tayis kub lugo, ilis kohet kud kulla inuhit tingnin. Il ilihau juvan lea lagamik ang nagutinik, nukakhini ang nanik. Kulang mik atong nang mik munak nang mik ikpigohong nang mik uwang at tao inang ningulak ko nga ayuw lihak tarka ayuw ka tigil lihak taka una kulang tay ma atong niya laga ang abko ang namut uming nga kulang kapagtuga loa mik mon kuya lakpagtunga o kaujib lugo munat munak at tiang niya kaya pinmagaligo atok pang niya kaya Ihuak tu miglo atok palaglo ko. Ublo mi nuna bun mi humil ka glo. Kulang ni ikita ni balak tu katimanid ang mang ang mang niya laga ngata. Inuit katit ka ngata. Kulang ikita ko ko. Kinga ko tiglo ang mago tiglo at pagan. Tama. Ublo mi ublo ko. Good morning. As introduced, I am Edna. Ikhivalaki Lias, Hatuleang Miutak, a person of thin ice, as my grandmother would call me. I was born in a tent on a frozen lake when my extended family was netting fish under the ice for their winter supply. I think that is why I love ice fishing, especially in the warm spring sun, whether the fish are biting or not. I am of mixed ancestry. Inuit, one touch with Chin, First Nation, Swedish, and Danish. I lived primarily the life of the Copper Inuit along the Coronation Gulf in the western Kitakmut of Nunavut. Through interest in my ancestry, I've built a strong relationship with most of my extended family, including the Swedes. The theme of this Congress. 2021, Humanities and Social Sciences, Northern Relations. Inuit were and are still in constant relations with their environment, our universe, and our spiritual world. Since I can remember, the environment was my university and ancestors were my professors. I am of my grandparents, Inuit, traditional homeland. I grew up in a traditional lifestyle and in a very safe environment surrounded by my grandparents, parents and aunts and uncles. I blossomed in a very healthy, loving and safe environment. I learned specific skills and knowledge directly from each person who had those special skills. I am of breast milk from my aunts. Our village raised every child. The adults reared not only their immediate children, but also their nieces and nephews. I was said to go to any aunt to breastfeed when my mother was too busy to feed me. Some caring aunt would pause in her task to nourish me. However, eventually everyone cut me off. However, this early relationship building couldn't have been more important. I am what I ate. I ate the richest natural food in my childhood from the environment's lands, lakes, rivers, and sea. A diet of land and sea mammals, fishes of all kinds, and migratory birds, supplemented by the rich summer harvest of berries, roots, and plants. Richness of my environment nourished every need. I am of dogs and dog teams. The panting of the dogs 
and the swoosh of the sled runners would lull me to sleep atop the big load on our winter mode of transportation. Sled dogs were not pets. Yes, as a child, I may have played with husky pups, but as soon as they were old enough to put in harness, they became trainees to join the dog team. Dogs always knew the way home. The leader of the pack was any hunter's best friend. I've seen my father cry when he had to put down his most faithful and long time best leader. I personally gave away my last team of sled dogs in 2001 when I was moving back south. And I'll tell you a short story of my Inuk name, Ikhivallak. I am Edna Agnes Ikhivallak in my interest in my ancestry and where I came from, because Inuit traditionally named their babies in honor and respect of someone who has been deceased for some time. My grandfather named me Ikhivallak. And while I was younger, I'm sorry that I didn't ask who I was named after. I didn't ask him. So I really had to ask around my relatives, the elders and seniors in our community. But no one seemed to know who Ikhivallak was until one day one of my uncles sat me down and he says, now I know and I remember who, who you're named after. He told me to sit down. So I sat down with him and he says, your grandfathers had a very good dog team. He had a very good leader, excellent leader of the pack. His leader was old and getting very slow and weak. And I was born at that time. So my grandfather named me Ikhivallak, named me after his most trusted, faithful, and best friend, the leader of his dog team. I finally knew who Ikhival, where Ikhivallak came from. So when I look at my, all my names now, I now know who Edna was. She was a leader and a teacher to Inuit women on sewing traditional clothing, especially of the Alaskan style. Agnes, on my father's side, was a Gwich'in leader. She initiated the land claims process for the Inuvialuit in the Western Arctic, and then Ikhivallak, my grandfather's best friend. I had to laugh that I was named after a dog, but when you think of all these people I'm named after, they were all leaders. And I can understand why it seemed like I was always trying to lead or help people in a way to move forward in some fashion. So that's my name, Ikhivallak. We lived in peace and harmony, highly respecting our environment and all it provided. The seasons and the weather dictated what we did, where we traveled and when. Mother Nature was and is still the boss. If we couldn't get out to the harvest, my ancestors would say, ayong nangman, meaning it can't be helped. Patience was the greatest asset of Inuit. Patience in sitting, standing, sorry, over a seal hole, motionless in frigid temperatures. Patience in making the neatest tiny stitches when making waterproof sealskin boots. Patience in scraping the sealskins so as not to make knits and cuts. Patience in making equipment of bone and stone tools. Everything I did in my Inuk University took patience to learn. L listening skills, observation skills, interpretation skills, practice and more practice from sewing to skinning an animal, to preparing, to making a meal, of managing and running a team of dogs, to making dry fish or dry meat, to setting up a shelter. 
my professors had greater patience than I did. Living in an oral tradition, listening to detail was crucial. A rush job or mistake could be costly. Observation and trying endlessly was key to the mastery of skills. Building relations with everyone around me, my environment, the sky, our universe, and our spirits, spirituality was crucial to the Inuit and it's still in practice today. Kwanakohe, thank you very much. Merci. Ani, bienvenue, and welcome. My name is Mike Degagne, and I'm the incoming chair of the Board of Directors of the Federation for the Humanities and Social Sciences. Je suis heureux de vous accueillir pour l'ouverture du Congrès 2021. We're thrilled to welcome you to the opening of Congress 2021. On behalf of the Federation, I express my gratitude to the elders for their guidance and words of welcome. As we gather, we extend our respect to all First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples for their valuable contributions, past and present. The Federation is the national voice for humanities and social sciences research and teaching. With a membership that comprises more than 160 universities, institutions and scholarly associations, we represent over 91,000 researchers across Canada. On this 90th anniversary of Congress, we are thrilled to partner with the University of Alberta to bring Congress to you virtually with the theme, Northern Relations. This year, Congress carries forth critical conversations around anti-black racism and confronting colonialism and the urgent action required at all levels of our community. Knowledge from the humanities and social science is critical to helping us understand the historical and systemic forces that contribute to inequality. Our disciplines have always played an essential role in addressing society's most pressing challenges. And today, in shaping pandemic recovery towards a more just, equitable, and prosperous future. La tâche qu'il nous reste à accomplir est de grande ampleur, et c'est ensemble que nous pourrons la réaliser. The task ahead of us is significant, and together we can achieve it. On behalf of the Federation, I wish to thank University President Bill Flanagan and academic convener Michael O'Driscoll and your fantastic team for bringing this first virtual Congress to the community. Welcome to Congress. Je vous remercie. Je vous souhaite un beau congrès. Thank you and we wish you a great Congress. Hello everyone. I'm Bill Flanagan, President of the University of Alberta. On behalf of the entire campus, I'm pleased to welcome you to the 90th anniversary edition of Congress for the first time delivered virtually to thousands of participants across Canada and around the world. For the past five years, my colleagues at the University of Alberta have been building toward this moment. Our students, researchers, logistical teams, and leadership have worked tirelessly to ensure an outstanding experience for everyone involved. And now we're poised for success, with hundreds of experts and volunteers standing by to support our presenters, audience members, and special guests. This year's theme of Northern Relations and our focus on anti-Black racism and decolonization are an invitation to tackle some of the most challenging issues of the day, and we're thrilled to play a part in staging those vital conversations. As partners of the Federation for the Humanities and Social Sciences, we're proud to play host to the largest virtual academic conference in Canadian history. So welcome to Congress 2021, Here's wishing you all the very best as you join together over the coming days and look forward to the future. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Maggie Mateer, the Interim President and Vice Chancellor of Yukon University, Canada's first university north of 60. I'm very pleased to welcome you all to the 2021 Congress of the Humanities and Social Sciences. As you know, this year's theme is Northern Relations, and we were honoured by the invitation to provide input into the programming for the week ahead. I'm speaking to you from the traditional territory of the Kwanlin Dun First Nation and Ta'an Kwachan Council. These are just two of the 14 First Nations that share their land with us here in Yukon, 
And we're proud that our commitment to honoring Yukon First Nations ways of learning, knowing, and being is enshrined in the Yukon University Act. Our relationships with Yukon First Nations and the land around us enrich and inspire our students, our research, curriculum, and services. We also appreciate our relationship with the University of Alberta, our Congress host. U of A is our partner in the delivery of the Northern Environmental and Conservation Sciences degree. I'd like to thank everyone at the U of A, the Federation of Humanities and Social Sciences, the partner institutions, and the scholarly associations who have worked so hard to create a week of thought-provoking and engaging activities for us. And I hope everyone has a rewarding and enlightening week. All of us here at Yukon University are looking forward to deepening our existing relationships with you and to the beginning of new ones. Hello, I'm Michael O'Driscoll, Convener for Congress 2021. I'm here on the shores of the North Saskatchewan River, on what for thousands of years has been a gathering place for diverse Indigenous peoples. That's the University of Alberta North Campus, right over there behind me. And this is Treaty 6 territory, Métis Nation homeland. And recognizing the history of this land is not only a deep obligation, it's also been central to our shared vision for Congress. More than five years ago, the University of Alberta launched a successful bid to host Congress 2021 in partnership with the Federation for the Humanities and Social Sciences. Our plan from the outset was to use Edmonton's geography to stage important conversations led by Indigenous and non-Indigenous Northerners. We developed the theme of Northern relations in conversations with Indigenous students, scholars, leaders and elders here on campus and in consultation with our northern networks, including Yukon University. The idea, pressing concerns in the north today, climate change, food security, education, governance, were of critical interest to all Canadians. And here was a chance to engage those issues with a national audience. Edmonton is often called the gateway to the north, but we were quickly offered a correction to that. For Northerners, it's more like the gateway to the South. And that flip in perspective became the guiding principle of our Congress initiative, opening up to the transformative power of different experiences, different voices. And after a year of COVID-19 isolation, during which our relationships to work, life, family and community have been so thoroughly challenged, and during which the stark discrepancies between privilege and deprivation have been so powerfully evident, that means more than ever. And with the rising up of voices in protest against unrelenting and brutal systemic racial violence, we embrace the responsibility to make space for challenging conversations about all kinds of relations across the North and around the world. And so we're here to talk about decolonization, about combating racism, and about how Congress can bring EDI to the very center of its practices. Going virtual has been a great learning experience as we slowed and rethought every detail of conventional conferencing. And now, hundreds of contractors and volunteers, socially distanced or working remotely, will be on hand to help you, our guests, come together and show the world what high impact, sustainable, accessible, affordable virtual conferencing looks like. Welcome then to Canada's largest ever virtual academic conference. On behalf of the University of Alberta's Congress team, I'd like to say how proud we are to serve as your hosts, and we're here to help make Congress 2021 a success for everyone involved. And this is the most exciting thing to me about Congress this year is we have the opportunity to not just simply accommodate, right? to not do the smallest possible thing to, to allow the inclusion of those of us who were never imagined in the space. That includes disability, includes indigeneity, that includes uh, two-spirit and, and trans non-binary folks, and that includes racialized folks. So instead of doing the smallest possible change so we have the least disruption to this institution, we have the opportunity to invite, to lean into the disruption, to imagine how actually if we center these experiences, how can we allow us to more quickly disrupt, for example, colonialism in the institution, to disrupt ableism in the institution. You know, to borrow from Kelly Fritch, like how can, how can disability be disruptive in the most positive, creative way possible? I think, you know, in Canada, we, we always think 
And I hope we, maybe we should always think that we're getting better at it, that we're getting better at our Indigenous and non-Indigenous relationships. But what I find when I'm teaching is there's this huge gap, this absence in especially historical policies and understandings and how, how things came into being. When I think of the North, I think of food scarcity, I, extreme food scarcity. And I don't think I can say it enough that parents eat once so that their kids can eat three times in a day. And that's wrong. And we're here in Canada, our beautiful first world country, with people in the North that don't live in third world conditions, but fourth world. And I think, you know, we don't put enough time and attention and passion into people in the North and the conditions that they live within. Having people being able to walk away and pause for a half second before what they think of as the truth about anything they hear about something indigenous kind of invades its way into their, into their frontal lobe. Have them just pause for a second and ponder about kind of what they've learned and how what they've learned at Congress makes them unpack what they've otherwise sort of taken as being true. And what we need to do is to have people to turn their emotions outward and feel a sense of public responsibility. And so if we can get a Congress that increases the levels of the public responsibility that people feel and think about concrete actions that can be undertaken in partnership with Indigenous communities, Indigenous organizations, Indigenous faculty, staff and students, I think that's a job well done. I'd like to have discussions on Indigenization, land and Indigenous governance. I'd also like to talk about how we can build Indigenous us black and people of colour anti-racist coalitions on campuses, especially bearing in mind the need to have respectful relations. Something else that for me is quite significant as a black settler is thinking about how we resist continuing coloniality and indigenous dispossession and work in solidarity with uh, indigenous communities as part of our responsibility as black settlers in Canada. I'd like to talk about, and this is related also to my CRC project, what a decolonial curriculum would look like or a decolonized curriculum. And I think also for, in terms of where we work and learn, I'd like us to give some thought to what a decolonial anti-racist space of teaching, learning and thriving might actually look like in terms of equity and how we can drive these changes forward. We need to be talking about Indigenous nationhood and sovereignty. We need to be talking about climate change. We need to be talking about resource development. But we also need to be talking about more complicated and harder topics like systemic racism, like Black Lives Matter, like how it is in this country when, you know, we have all of these national commissions, RCAP 1996, Truth and Reconciliation murdered Indigenous women and girls just last year. And, and how all of this really good work that's being done isn't necessarily advancing the kind of society that we're in today. We should find ways to engage BIPOC communities, uh, listen to them, bring them on table, and then find ways to, to foster relationship across divide, across spaces that delimit and define who should have access to those spaces or whose voice should count in the larger scheme of things on campus. And so I'm interested in Congress being more receptive to tackling hard difficult, uncomfortable conversations on anti-black racism, on racial injustice, even in the academy. I'm excited about the possibilities of having this conversation and then beyond the, having this conversation, what are the steps we are going to put in place to make these conversations become real, become tangible and become lasting, not only uh, within the, the university uh, community, but also in the larger society. I hope that Congress 2021 can really provide um, an inspiring model for moving forward. So I hope that we never go back exactly to the way it was before. 
And I mean this in several ways. One is in thinking about the possibilities of the virtual engagement and the ways in which that might continue. And, and secondly, in terms of that kind of radical inclusivity, meaning that creating a space where more voices are heard, more people feel they can contribute and feel part of that community without giving up some part of themselves. Right, where they can bring them, themselves and their ways of knowing and being into that space. And so I think there's such a wonderful opportunity with the theme, with, yes, the challenges, but opportunities of the virtual environment, and with its location at the University of Alberta, that Congress 2021 can really serve as an inspiration for a, a reinvigorated and reimagined Congress that can start to address some of these systemic and ongoing barriers that have been part of the Academy for so long. We are grateful for the messages we've had a chance to hear from Indigenous knowledge holders and others who have participated in the opening session. The 2021 Congress of the Humanities and Social Sciences theme, Northern Relations, encourages each of us to explore the connections between peoples, communities, cultures, and ways of knowing, while also listening to those voices that speak directly to some of the most pressing matters of relation to the land and to each other, such as climate change, governance, social justice, anti-black racism, decolonization, reciprocity, education, and much more. The Congress 2021 logo includes the ribbons of light that are representative of Northern Lights, but also suggests sound waves, a symphony of voices, perspectives, ideas, communities, and cultures coming together in harmony. Relations are at the heart of how peoples communicate, organize knowledge, and understand their place in the world. Welcome to Congress 2021, an ideal space to listen, not only with your ears, but with your heart, to learn, to relate, and to live as a relation to one another and the land, and to become aware of the generational impact of your actions. Welcome.